the talk title today is Learning to Be a Cop, Curious, Open, and Present. And I like to start by saying, can you imagine that I'm studying and learning to be a cop? That would be really interesting. And so we're using this idea of curiosity, of openness and presence as a way of being in the world, not as an intellectual understanding or a concept. And that's really what I want to focus on today. What I want to focus on today is the difference between living from my mind and as my mind into recognizing a greater reality and understanding the conditions that create what we call reality and the nature of reality itself. Earlier, Amy, I don't know if you realize that you almost accidentally, I'm using air quotes, accidentally said human bringing instead of human being. And I think that's incredibly powerful. So I wanna pause there because there are no accidents in spirit. So what would it be like? Because I've been sitting with that since you said it. What would it be like to recognize that we are human bringings? What are we bringing to the conversation? What are we bringing to the world? What are we bringing in our individual relationships? What are we bringing with our social media posts? So I wanna start with that because one way to frame this and a quote that has been emerging for me is this, the greatest freedom we will ever experience is freedom from the reactive impulse. And we're living in extraordinary times. Now, we could obviously say we're living in extraordinary times at any given moment. What is interesting in our culture today is that we have this thing called social media, and it's a fairly new phenomenon, really. It used to be that we would have conversation. You know, I, when you think about like the stereotype of gossiping, it's over the fence with your neighbor, right? And then gossip would spread. And that's how what we call collective consciousness uh, permeates our culture. But now we have instant, we have all these different platforms to share opinions. And it's very interesting opinions. Because if I believe I am my mind, if I believe I am my thoughts, then it is natural for me to want to defend my position or my point of view. And becoming a cop, curious, open and present, for me is the way I work with this. Because if you're anything like me, if you've come into new thought teachings, or maybe you've gone to therapy, or you've gone to uh, personal empowerment groups of any kind, you might have heard change your thinking, right? Change your narrative, rewrite your story. And I spent about 20 years trying to do that. And there, was, there were some incremental changes. Oh my gosh, I can actually start to change the way I've thought about this. And then there was this moment that I realized, and I don't know if it was a moment, but there was this gradual awakening to something much different. And it comes right out of what Ron said, and that is our spiritual eyes and ears are always there. What if I didn't have to change the story? What if I didn't have to change the narrative? What if instead of that, I could tap into a greater reality? The truth of who and what we are is beyond thought. What a relief, what a relief to come to a place where we can recognize that it might not be about changing the narrative. And when I recognize I have a mind, but I'm not my mind, and I realize as many of the new thought, foundational principles of new thought in one way or another is there's only one power and one presence. And I either have that as an intellectual understanding, and that goes something like this in my life. Oh, yeah, even though that person's wrong, there must, you know, th there's only one power and one presence, so I must accept them, right? Do you feel the energy around that? As opposed to, I'm actually going to live this principle. I'm going to recognize that there is one power and one presence, and that we're each an expression of that power. And then we come into this world and we start getting taught and trained that we're something other than that. 
So the spiritual journey in itself is not about attaining or moving towards something. It's about a great remembering of that which is already present at every moment. And so I, I was thinking this morning, I was sitting with What's the opposite of curious, open, and present? Now, we could use a lot of words, but let's just explore that. So the opposite of curious is I have the answer, right? I, I'm right. Good, bad, right, wrong. The opposite of openness might be closed. I, I choose to close my heart to this moment. I, I choose to close my mind to this moment. And the opposite of present could be distraction. It could be future thinking. It could be living in the past. And it's been said that all suffering is an anticipation or a memory. That's something to try on for a moment. When I'm truly present, when I'm open, when I'm curious, I have a very different relationship with what's happening in the moment. And I can recognize that when I go into a story of any kind, it could be a story of rightness. It could be a story of wrongness. As soon as I do that, I'm living in an alter, alternate reality. And that alternate reality is believing <clears throat> what I read, what I hear, what people say. And yet there's a deeper approach to life. And that is an understanding very deeply that the deeper reality here is absolute presence. <clears throat> so let's explore what that actually might mean on a daily basis. Because a lot of times these concepts sound really wonderful, but how do I actually live them? How do I actually live it? Curiosity to me is the key because we could also say the opposite of curiosity is judgment. I know the answer. I have a judgment. You are right. You are wrong. That is good. That is bad. And we are, we are inundated with that message from our friends, from social media, from the media itself. And I'm just going to say, <clears throat> this might not be uh, what you need or want to do, but I will tell you the greatest gift I've given myself in the last 18 months, and that is to turn off the news. Completely turn off the news. Now, there are people who have told me, oh, you're just burying your head in the sand. You just aren't aware of what's happening in the world. And then I will say to myself, yes, that's true. And what freedom I'm experiencing because of it. Because there are so many different ways to tell a story. And I know I've said this so many times, but if you turn on one news channel and hear about a world event and then turn on a different news channel <clears throat> and hear about that same event, you're hearing two totally different realities about the same situation. So if, any, if the news is anything, the news is an exploration into the human ego, which isn't bad. But with curiosity, I ask myself the question, what gets created when I have that entering my consciousness? You know, when I first started a new thought, the, the Unity community I went to uh, had a lot of focus on young people. And the teenagers, I love teenagers, right? They would get up on the stage at the end and they would ask either the, the, the kids, different age groups, what they learned today. And a teenager said, well, I learned this today. Garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> it's like, that's what I love about teenagers. Just, here it is. And, and the person went on to say, yeah, if I listen to garbage, I will experience more of it. If I focus on love and light, I'm going to experience more of that. And it's not that we're ignoring the conditions of the world. It's that we're moving beyond the story. So the story that we've been carrying about ourselves might include disconnection, separation. It might include, I really love this person. You know, one of the things that's interesting to me is we often say we want to find like-minded people. And I will tell you, it does not matter who I focus on. If we spent enough time talking about our opinions, we could find a place where we disagreed about something. You know, I have very dear friends who have a very different point of view than I do about politics, about gun control, about just about anything. And if I believe I am my thoughts, then I would say, well, how can 
I be a friend with this person? We're so different. And yet at the core, the truth of who and what we are is so much greater than that. And so we can move into a be, becoming a human bringing. What am I bringing to this conversation? So it's not so much what the world needs to do or how the world needs to change, but how do I recognize this greater reality? When I become curious and I recognize my mind, I don't need to change the story. I don't need to change the narrative. I can simply recognize it for what it is. And I can choose to focus on a thought. And the thought I choose to focus on is one of countless, of infinite number of thoughts. So rather than saying, I need to change this thought, she needs to change this thought, he needs to stop doing that, I can say, oh, what am I choosing today? Let me be curious about the energy that I experience. In my new book, Conscious Creation, I talk about moving beyond the law of attraction because we have been in a paradigm, which has been a really powerful paradigm. And new thought was really, I think, pioneers in this. And that is we can change our thinking and change our life. We can have a new narrative, a new story, and that we can actually hold a vibration and the world, then we attract something that matches that frequency. And this is a profound teaching. And yet we're, in, we're on the precipice of something to me, much greater. And that is moving from the law of attraction to the law of radiance. How do I radiate love frequency? Is it possible, possible for me to be the love that is so much needed? We've heard this over and over and over again. I mean, Gandhi said, be the change you wanna see in the world. He didn't say change the world, right? Be the change. Can I be that which I want to see in the world? And then life becomes a great experiment and it becomes very, well, I'm just going to say it becomes entertaining on some level. And I don't mean to diminish. I want to be really clear. I don't mean to diminish the pain that anyone is experiencing in the world. The issue, though, is, as Pema Chodron said, if you want a life free of pain, you've come to the wrong planet. Right? So we could, we could have a conversation of why we incarnated on planet Earth at this time. Um, the why is very seductive, but I don't know if it really changes the experience of reality, right? So for whatever reason, we incarnated on a planet where it, their pain seems to be a part of, of life. And we end up running from that pain or trying to not experience that pain or change that pain. We might even say, I wanna help take away the pain but instead, can we recognize that there's a profound difference between pain and suffering? The Buddha told us that 2,500 years ago. And the difference is, as the Buddhists say, pain is inevitable, suffering is option. <clears throat> now, there might be a point in our evolution on this planet where we don't have pain anymore. But at this point, suffering to me is the resistance to pain. So what is freedom? curiosity, openness, and presence. Being curious about my point of view, being curious about what gets created when I watch news for an hour and then wonder why I'm in fear. Open to feel the energy or feel the frequency when I'm in particular situations. Is the energy light or is it heavy? It's not good or bad, but what do I want to create in the world? What do I want to bring to the world? What do I want to offer the world? And so whatever I perceive to be lacking in the world is what I can offer the world. And I don't mean that in some codependent way, right? That's another really popular conversation in our culture. What I'm saying is rather than being in the frequency of thought or even emotion, I can tap into my essential beingness. And then I can be that in the world and I can radiate that into the world. And then I can recognize that that has a profound effect. As Amy said earlier, it's not only a ripple effect, but it also happens instantly in consciousness. Someone across the world will feel more of their true nature as I dedicate myself to expressing that true nature. And you know what? It takes courage because the ego is seductive and it's very easy to get into the stories that we're hearing in our world today. It's very easy to have a judgment of someone that appears to have a different point of view. It's very seductive to think, I know 
right about this. This is, I'm reading it right here. It must be true. And so, you know, sometimes people say I'm a conspiracy theorist. And the only reason someone says I'm a a conspiracy theorist is I question what I hear. I'm curious about it. I don't just accept what I hear. I say, oh, let me be curious about this. Maybe I do my own research. Maybe I feel into my body what feels true for me. I'm open to exploring that there are different points of view. See, the mind is a very interesting mechanism. (laughs) The mind is sorting and separating, and it's incredibly useful. Obviously, we would not be here without our minds. I couldn't be talking right now without my mind. So it's not bad to have a point of view. It's not bad to have an opinion. It's just, let's be curious about what gets created when I believe that's who I am. So the fundamental shift is so simple. Sometimes it's so simple that my mind can't even understand it. And the simplicity is, when I recognize I have a mind, but I'm not my mind. I have an emotion, but I'm not my emotion. Who and what am I then? What is the nature of reality? I remember when I first learned or heard of becoming the observer of the thoughts, the next natural question for me is, who or what is the observer? And that's a question I lived in for many years. If I'm not my thoughts, if I have thoughts, and the intention is to observe them, what is it? Who is it that is observing those thoughts? Becoming curious about that, open to receiving these internal messages and being present with what is, I can begin to explore a greater possibility for life, infinite beingness. And so then we can and say, we can unplug from the conditions of the world and plug into this greater reality and then bring it to the world. And that's the greatest paradox. We can spend decades and, well, actually centuries because we have trying to change the world. And as Byron Katie said, the only issue is it doesn't work. So when I recognize that I'm not here to change the world, I mean, this is a quote from Michael Beckwith. I'm not here to change the world. I'm here to serve the new paradigm. Serve the new paradigm. You know, when, you, when you're a server at a restaurant, you're the one bringing it to the table. Right? So we often think of service as being in service to others, which of course it is. And yet we are serving every single moment in consciousness. Every thought I have, every emotion I feel is contributing to the field, the field. And I believe it's Rumi who said, out beyond beyond the ideas of good and bad, there is a field, I will join you there. Now the field is a field of consciousness. 